I'm Cordova Crofty. Welcome to Candid Profiles. I'd like to thank Mr. Dan DeVassell for joining me today for a conversation. Thank you so much for having me today in your office well, space. Well, thanks for coming. No problem. So we'll get right to it. Um, first question, what would be your top three legislative priorities if you were to be elected? I think the top three are, number one, jobs in the economy. We have to get jobs back here to Fairfield County. We're 50th out of 50 uh, in job creation. Mm -hmm. And I have ideas around tax reform, uh, help for the long-term unemployed, and immigration reform that I think can get the economy going. Second is health care reform. It's, I think both Republicans and Democrats are getting it wrong. We need to keep the parts of Obamacare that are working, but get rid of the parts that aren't. Because the middle class, our health care premiums have gone up 35% because of Obamacare. And I think I have a plan that will actually reduce costs for the middle class and cover more of the uninsured through ideas like tort reform, interstate competition between health care companies, about a dozen ideas that will actually save the middle class money. And third is transportation. And this is where my opponent, Jim Himes, has failed us because he promised to be on the Transportation Committee in Washington, and then immediately when he was elected, he forgot about it. So our traffic is so much worse now than it was four years ago. Metro North is so much worse. And I have a plan to make things better through on the Merit and I-95, adding in entrance and exit lanes to allow the choke points like on the Merit exit 44, 42, 40, 35 to, to actually stop the wave effect that happens with traffic. And on Metro North, unlike Jim Himes, who's proposed a second train station in Bridgeport, I think we need to invest more in maintenance. And it's not very exciting, but it will actually help get the trains running on time. So those would be my top three priorities. So let's get into transportation because that was my first question. Great. The Obama administration has rated you know, Connecticut the worst infrastructure. And you hear every day someone's complaining about my train was late on Metro North or you know, I am stuck in traffic getting to work on 95 or the Merit. What are those things that you want to do to make sure that we're just getting, people are getting to work on time? That's exactly right. So let, let's take roads and then let's take rails. On the roads, these choke points that are happening on the Merit in 95, they're always the same, right? People like, I live up in Shelton and I work down in Stamford and, you know, basically I can tell you exactly where they are. And the problem is, uh, and a lot of these exits, take like exit 40 in Norwalk, people have to come to a complete stop and then start up again to get on. Or if they're getting off, they really don't have that much room to, to get off. So what happens? Everybody slows down. And it causes this wave effect of traffic that's backing up. And what we need to do is if we actually put in 1,500 yards of an exit or an exit, uh, entrance ramp, it actually is going to help out tremendously. We did this up on the Sikorsky Bridge when I was a state senator between Stratford and Milford. And there's no longer any traffic there. So instead of you know, Congressman Himes, who claims he's gotten a billion dollars for transportation for the district, but our commute times are longer and Metro North's breaking down more, we actually need to be doing the more practical things to help our roads. Uh, and on the rails, as I said, the answer is not a second train station in Bridgeport or big flashy things that Congressman Himes proposing. It's actually the common sense things to do uh, maintenance like getting new tracks that don't freeze when it gets below 28 degrees or not having a relay break in New Haven and the whole line shuts down for an hour. So that's what I hope to accomplish. So next question would be um, bullying. So October is Bully Preven Prevention Month um, nationally. What do you think, um, do you think there's a role Congress should play in combating bullying in the schools? Yeah, and I think that w there is a role, but it's mostly a support role because most bullying, it needs to be dealt with on a local level. It needs to be stopped in our schools. And you know, look, as a congressman, you can actually vote to set national standards, you can vote f funding for it, but you're not gonna be on the front line. It's teachers who are on the front line and parents who are on the front line. And you know, as someone who, look, I'm kind of a nerd myself, I was bullied in school, I'm sure a lot of people have been. Um, when you actually get down to it, having the adult presence there to actually say, I see this happening, I'm going to stop it before it starts, and empowering other kids, which I think the public service announcements that we're doing are phenomenal, to empower kids to stand up and say, hey, wait, look, what's going on here is not right, and I'm going to stop it as well. So as a congressman, I think we have a supporting role to play, but really we have to make sure that our teachers and parents are enabled to actually go out there and stop it before it starts.
So another school-related question is education. So in our district, there's a great diversity among schools, whether they're well-performing schools or the you know poor-performing schools. What are some sort of things you think college can do to help the achievement gap close in Connecticut? Yeah, and, and you, you're absolutely right. The, our uh, Fairfield County has one of the biggest achievement gaps ever. We have phenomenal schools in our suburbs, but a lot of our urban schools are struggling. And I think what Congress has to do is first, stop telling teachers what to do. Is both Republicans and Democrats have wanted to tell teachers what to do in the classroom, whether it's Republicans with no child left behind or Democrats with Common Core. And if you talk to a teacher, they'll actually tell you, look, every child is different and every class is different. So don't tell me what to do. Set standards that say, hey, look, by the end of fourth, eighth, and twelfth grade, you have to hit certain milestones, but then let teachers teach. Let them actually decide what the curriculum is going to be. And we may have a slightly different curriculum in Bridgeport and Darien, and that's okay, as long as all the kids are getting to the same place. So you know what, I, I think we need to empower teachers and you know, for, for Congress to continue to meddle with local education, uh, I think is a very very bad idea. What we should be doing is we should be serving as kind of a conduit of best practices between schools, but really allowing localities to make the decisions for themselves. So what excites you about representing the 4th Congressional District? Yeah, it's, it's actually that we were just talking about the diversity of the district. Fairfield County is a slice of Americana. We have the richest of the rich people live here. We have a huge middle class. We have a group of folks who are struggling. You know, we have demographically a diverse area with people from all, uh, all different racial backgrounds and ethnic backgrounds here. And so, you know, unlike some other congressional districts, this one you actually get to see the problems of America and actually try to solve them. Um, rather than just, you know, some districts are very wealthy, some districts are very poor. Here you actually have to balance the needs of everyone. And that's one of the reasons it's a swing district. It's one of the reasons why Congressman Himes and I are tied in the polls right now is because it is, just like America, kind of a, a, just a, a, a slice of diversity. And so trying to actually represent that and make progress is one of the most interesting things I can imagine doing. So that really, really excites me to be able to help people from all walks of life.